were board. bored. And we were like, let's do something. Hi, Stephanie. Hi, Hannah. How many tips have you made so far? Just one oh, dollar. Yeah, put them up. <laughs> Dueling harps. Festival, college, renaissance festival, college, renaissance. Have you had a turkey leg today, my lord? <laughs> I've never once asked somebody that. A day in the life of a renfest harpist. My name is Hannah Flowers. And I'm Stephanie Claussen. And we are here today to tell you what it's actually like to be a harpist at the Minnesota Renaissance Festival. You might know us from our harpists react to mm -hmm. the harp being played in movies, YouTube videos. We are here to tell you how. Thank we you. got the job at the Renaissance Festival and you could too. Those clicker things. It just feels proper. What you might not know about us is that we became friends at the Minnesota Renaissance Festival. How old were you? I was 16. I had been there for a few years before Hannah started. I auditioned, I played harp and sang for them and they said, congratulations, you're hired. I played Shebeg Shamor and the Rights of Man. Be one verse of each uh -huh. and I was 12. And they said, congratulations, <laughs> you have the job. I think that harpists yeah. are valued. Yes. Uh, at the Renaissance Festival, I think it's really mm -hmm. fun for patrons to see harpists, and therefore I think the entertainment directors recognize the value. And if you're a cute kid, all the better. It's good for business. <laughs> make a lot of money too. Like as a 12 year old, people were giving me money, not necessarily because I was a harpist, but because I was a cute a 12 kid year old. playing the harp. Be clear, our only experience with Renaissance Festivals is the Minnesota Renaissance Festival. For the Minnesota Ren Fest, you have to go through the Academy, which is a six week acting school. They teach you how to act and speaking Shakespearean-esque language. I remember I got a guide mm -hmm. that had all the Shakespearean terms and language for you to incorporate into your character. I was a huge theater kid as a teenager and I just thought it was the coolest thing. I was so intimidated. I was so scared. I, they wanted you to develop your character, choose a character name, and uh, really figure out your background, where do you come from, what nationality are you. And I just wanted to be myself. How long were you out at RenFest for? I was there for about 15 seasons. I didn't do them all consecutively because mm -hmm. I took time off for college. I was one of those crazy kids that did it through college, which I'm not saying is necessarily a good idea. Festival. College, Renaissance Festival, college, Renaissance. Yeah, it's for the young. Yeah, if you're gonna do that. We want to tell you how you can be a wonderful appreciator of the harpist at your local Renaissance Festival. We might have some ideas of things you might not want to do. Some of our favorite moments and things that we have taken away from our combined 24 years into our professional lives and careers as harpists. Well, it starts with the alarm clock ringing at about 6 a.m. Don't actually finish dressing because you can do that either in the car or in the parking lot. You are partially lot. clothed. You're just not wearing all the layers of clothes that your costume necessitates. Hear ye, hear ye, my lords and ladies. One must ready thyself for a day at the festival. First clothing thyself and then attending to your accessories. Your leather pouches with your participant pass and food booklets, your hat, your drinking vessel, as well as your fan to cool thy fractious features, a tuning key for thy harp, and you must not forget your tip basket, perhaps a hilarious sign, don't you wish you would have played the flute? <laughs> no. A spoon for eating, and there you are. You are ready for your day at the festival. So at 8 a.m., this is cast call. Mm -hmm. Gather together and you get the news of the day from the entertainment director. Warn us about weather conditions. If it's going to be really hot, they give us reminders yeah. us to drink water. Yeah. You get quite warm when it is 95 and humid and you quickly sweat through your entire costume. Putting ice in your hat so yeah. it can kind of melt down. The back down. Of your... yep. Nothing against the patrons, but my favorite time of day is before canon when we have about a half an hour after cast call everybody's going about getting ready for the day and everybody mm -hmm. on site is in costumes quite magical where do you play harp and how do you decide where you're going to play every time you see a musician playing on this lovely rock or on a lovely bench or in front of a shop it is planned people are scheduled in half hour increments mm -hmm. and once your half hour is done you move along and someone comes in and takes your spot 
it did wonders for my heart playing. Yeah. Eight <laughs> hours of practice. Probably oh, had about yeah. 15 minutes <laughs> that I would play over and over again. But I still use them at gigs. Mm-hmm. When when there's a moment yeah. where I'm like, I need to just watch the door until the bride comes, I pull out my Grenadier and the Lady. And I can vamp on Grenadier <laughs> and the Lady for a good five minutes before it gets boring, and I can just watch that door. But while you are walking about and playing, you get to interact with patrons and say hello. And have you had a turkey leg today, my lord? <laughs> I've never once asked somebody that. That is, is physically challenging. We book at least 10,000 steps. And I think that's something that any harpist should think about is, yes. am I able to carry my harp? People wear the same clothes. Yes, you can wear years. <laughs> and so you recognize them really well. <laughs> Funny when you run into people in the real world, shall we say, not wearing their Renfest costume. And you look at them and you're like, I know you. So familiar. You have to picture them with a hat. Yes. And then suddenly you're like, oh, I know exactly who you are. So towards the end of the evening, people are starting to slow down to sit and rest their legs. Mm-hmm. That was one of my times that I loved playing because then you'll have people that will just sit and just enjoy sometimes the whole half hour. Mm-hmm. And you really feel like you're ministering to people. <laughs> Stephanie and I, of course, were playing out at the Renaissance Festival, but we wouldn't often see each other. Like, we were like passing other. out, like, hi, Stephanie, and hi, Anna. How many tips have you made on a real bad day? What about you? Oh, good, at least it's not just me. Right. Yeah. Uh, we'll get to tipping eventually. When you're first starting early in the season, you are trying new pieces. Week five, six, seven, you start to get really tired of all of your music. We were, were bored. bored. Let's do something about yeah. it. We were playing together, and then people would walk past us, and they would yell, Dueling Harps! Well, heck, we could be Dueling Harps. Yeah, put them up. (laughs) You would win. (laughs) The best choice we made was deciding to sit in the middle of the lane, so like the road, people are walking. We sat in the middle, six feet apart, facing each other, with our tip basket right in the middle. We'd play a game where we would start a tune, uh, like Murray's wedding or something. Mm-hmm. But we tell the crowd that they had to yell switch. And then we would each, in our long dresses, big hats, etc., switch, run to the other person's harp and start playing the same tune and have to pick up together right where we left off. It was a lot of fun. <laughs> it was interesting to compare the amount of money that we made when we were sitting next to each other. Like, mm-hmm. oh, look at their two nice harpists compared to when we were setting up like a duel. We made yeah. so much more money. Yeah. Part of being at the Renaissance Festival was about entertaining people. And it was also fun because um, when we weren't being so energetic, sometimes we would just literally play them yeah. together, still in that same setup. One of us would lead a tune that is in our repertoire, was in our repertoire, and then the other person could just improv. Like, I personally learned several tunes off mm. of you that mm-hmm. way. And, um, One of my favorite. It's hard to, to quantify it all. I think we did that every evening. Four years? At the oh, Renaissance. at least. We would play dueling harps together, but there was also another bit that was uproariously popular. Weirdly. <laughs> you ready to tell the world what we would do? Yeah, so why did we try this? We would go into the privies. Not into them. Let's clarify. <laughs> we would go and we would plop ourselves right at the entrance inside, and we would play duets <laughs> when we played where everybody walking out would give you a tip especially if we played the entertainer which obviously some of you may be saying this is not a renaissance piece we are aware <laughs> when you're playing pieces that people recognize say most people aren't up on the actual renaissance hits most of the music being played at renaissance festivals is actually quite a bit later by everybody the entertainer in the privies didn't seem like it was compatible with the renaissance festival however it was wildly popular and we made so much money <laughs> Renaissance Festival repertoire. There were always some top hits. We should have a rapid fire session. How many hits we can name? 15 seconds? Three, two, one. Green sleeves. Danny Boy. Uh, Scarborough Fair. Wild Mountain Time. 
Paco Bell's Canon, not Ransom. The Entertainer. Oh, um, uh, Sky Boat Song, which is also now the theme of Outlander. The Water is Wide. Oh my goodness. Keep going, keep going. Oh, I, um, one more. Mm, mm, time! The Rights of Man. <laughs> When you are out there all day and you've made about three dollars in tips from a day of playing, it can it just has be happened. discouraging. There, there was I think just one day, one day where I didn't make any money, but there was definitely days where I made like ten dollars. What it's important to know, I think, for those of you who um, patronize your local Renaissance festival, is that the majority of the people on cast are not necessarily well compensated. Mm. Us as professional musicians now, back in the day, worked at the Renaissance Festival for far less than anything in the real world. You don't choose to be a musician at the Renaissance Festival to make lots of money. Gaylord Soffer, yes. he made his living as a Renaissance That's Festival true. musician, so I think it's possible. I would not have been able to do that. You're not obliged to tip. And I think sometimes people would make eye contact, but then they would walk away because maybe they thought that now I've seen them, I'm expecting them to pay. What you shouldn't throw in your harvest tip basket. Cigarettes? Smoked or unsmoked. These things are from personal experience. We're not just making them up. <laughs> Rocks. Unless you are just a toddler. A toddler throws a little rock in the basket. It's cute. If an adult does it, no. not cute. Not cute. Not cute. Not cute. Not cute. Similarly, penny. <laughs> if you're an adult, it's kind of insulting. Um, and I don't know if that comes across as, as snooty. A dollar is a nice mm -hmm. amount to start at. <laughs> False money. Oh. Two things we, you really should not throw in anybody's Condoms and drugs, not, not really welcome. Well, we've told you what not to tip, so it's only fair that we tell you what you should tip. The uh, chocolate-covered strawberry. Leather roses purchased from one of the shopkeepers. Sometimes people would drop those little fairy pebbles. The other performers would throw food booklets mm, yeah. in my tip basket. I this is another one of those Renaissance Festival things. Well, in your contract, you're allotted a certain amount of food booklets. You can buy food from any of the food booths. You would just have extra for tea or scones. I always love $20 bills. My other favorite tip that I ever got, I'm actually wearing it right now, I got a silver ring. Isn't it pretty? Um, so someone just threw it in my basket, smiled at me, and kept walking. One thing that always drove me crazy was people who would just come up and touch the harp mm. without asking permission. Do not touch the harp unless you've asked permission. Like full grown adults, I would be playing whoosh, down the harp while I'm playing. Like, in what planet is that appropriate? <laughs> the just just the number of times where some sharp object attached to their person either hit my harp or almost hit my harp. Uh, don't spill your beverage on somebody's harp. <laughs> Our harps did not leave the Renaissance Festival unscathed. You're someone who's really friendly and helpful, and you see this poor teenage girl hauling a harp. Do not try and carry her harp for her. Without permission. Permission will not be granted. I don't know you. I'm not going to let you carry my multiple thousands of dollar instruments. It. We do appreciate We do appreciate it. I would rather live in a culture where people will offer to help, but I do think it's very important you ask first. You might be out with your friends, having a great time, but one thing to be considerate of, be spatially aware. Park right in front of somebody playing and right in front of their tip basket, I might add, and stand there for 10 minutes or 15 minutes, which is half of their allotted half hour time slot. It just comes across as rude. Do a quick, is anybody playing harp softly behind me? Somebody sat down on a bench right in front of me, so like repeatedly sounding their Viking horn. For the next 15 minutes in here, I am playing music behind them. Oh. Um, playing at the music.
music jam in the evening. It was so fun because as you're walking around the Renaissance Festival, you're seeing your fellow musicians and hearing little mm -hmm. snippets of their show, but you can't always sit and listen to the whole thing. And sometimes we would have mm -hmm. 20 musicians all playing yeah. together. Otherwise, you don't get to play right. together because you all have your separate spots, 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 spots. I always loved also when parents would stop and have their kids listen to the music. Sometimes there would be a little kid that would start dancing. <laughs> Moving to the music, it was so cute. Some of my best memories are tied to the friendships I made with shopkeepers and would ask me to play in their shop. Yeah. Especially, um, I made friends with Lowell and Carol at Prairie Pottery and they were always just so kind. Check up on me and uh, make sure I had what I needed. Some other friends would feed me lunch mm. every day oh, for nice. like multiple years in a row. My first year, I was awarded Best Musical Act. Oh. It was really encouraging as like a teenager who was just kind of dabbing my toes in the idea of being a professional harpist. I always tell people that my ability to ignore any outside distractions. Mm. We'll have people telling funny jokes. Mm -hmm. Juggling fire. Knives. Yeah. Um, you'll have people talking to you while you're playing. All sorts of interesting, distracting, loud noises. You just learn to continue playing harp through all of that. This is just a skill that you need as a performer and you mm. really develop it at the Renaissance Festival. How to carry on when you're not necessarily the most comfortable. How to change up my left hand accompaniment in the moment. And you're developing these skills that you might not have if you were looking at music all day. It also taught me a lot of people skills and how to perform, how to present yourself. Just talk with lots of different people mm -hmm. who you might not run into otherwise, which like directly translate into performance situations where you have no idea who you're gonna meet, but you're there to play. Playing the same pieces so often, mm -hmm. you develop an ease in your playing where you're not struggling for the technical details anymore. You even carry on conversations with people while you're playing. And I do feel like that has translated to my other music. You know, there's something to be said about going back and playing those same pieces for even, years. Even like really easy pieces yeah. uh, and just deepening and deepening and deepening how familiar. The Renaissance Festival was the best thing I ever did for my harp playing. Yes. The feeling like people are for you. It was just a really positive experience. Yeah. Uh, hard and of course there are things that we gripe about. Would you recommend a harpist work at the Renaissance Festival? Yes. I think it's one of the best things you could do for your playing. Just prepare yourself for the hard work involved. Recognize that you're not always going to be comfortable. And, and you're not necessarily going to be doing it because you want to make a lot of money. And you get to dress up and have fun with your <laughs> friends every weekend. It has left both of us with really wonderful memories. Mm -hmm. And friends, friends <laughs> that we've taken into life with us. Definitely grateful for that. A devoted harp um, uh, consumer? No, uh, you don't eat harps. Uh, what's the word? Appreciator, um, fan, um, connoisseur. Does that still imply that you're eating, eating. The harps? <laughs> don't eat harps. It's gonna be a good time. <laughs> and you know, oh, maybe some nice music.